So, um, what's up guys? It's your boy Lipitwa Timoto Salutilo over here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I know it has been oh, quite some time without releasing any video and as you can see I'm sweating since it's summer all time every day in Cuba. But yeah, uh, bear with me as I try to explain to you guys in this video um, because um, I have received a lot of requests on my socials through my socials about you know how to study medicine in Cuba how to apply to medical school in Cuba what it is that I need to expect you know when coming to study medicine in Cuba so through this video I'm gonna try to explain to you how you can possibly apply to medical school in Cuba and um, yeah basically what you need to expect you know the needs and needs of studying medicine in Cuba and stuff so yeah um, studying medicine in Cuba is actually good because um, one of the most important things you know when uh, trying to study medicine when you're applying to a university let me put it that way when you apply to a medical university what you need to do is you need to read them up you need to check them up and see how they rank up you know their academic performance and recommendations as well as um, you know the opinions of other people you need to like you know dig deeper and find out okay fine this is how medical school is in Cuba and yeah now let's get into it so um, there are three ways of applying to medical school in Cuba um, the first option is through the Proyecto Elam which is actually a Cuban partnership with foreign governments uh, whereby governments send their students to go study at the Latin American School of Medicine and the Cuban government will cover all the costs through the Proyecto Elam. Now, this Proyecto Elam is it's like a, a, a partnership or a project or a scholarship granted to, to governments, you know, they are allocated spaces and then they are granted, you know, this opportunity, whereby the students for the individuals they come and then they study medicine in Cuba and then the Cuban government takes care of all the expenses you know you don't have to pay for tuition you don't have to pay for registration you don't have to pay for the Cuban visa student visa you don't have to pay for anything so they are gonna cover everything for you now this uh, opportunity in the context of Namibia they usually used to offer it through uh, the through NASFA which is the Namibian Financial Students uh, Fund whereby they fund you, you know, they give you a stipend uh, per month or per every three months rather and the Cuban government takes care of your tuition, your, your what, your hostel fees, your registration fees, your visa application and all these things and things like um, uniform, medical equipment and all those things, they, they are going to be able to like find you and pay for these things and make sure that you have these things you know before you start um pre-med or first year of medical school basically uh pardon me i'm sweating you know it's summer in cuba every day all day but yeah uh so that is the first option of uh studying medical i mean medicine in cuba so through that program uh just a recap they are gonna provide everything but the disadvantage of this is sometimes you don't know um when your government is gonna release this type of uh, studying opportunity because uh sometimes these opportunities are uh, they you know they release them let me talk in the context of namibia they release them but not a lot of people um see them or there's a limited number of spaces you know three to maybe ten which is a little bit far-fetched but in most cases it's three to five students per country that is how they do so that is the first way of coming to study medicines in Cuba. Now the second option is through being funded by your own government, which is like them granting you a scholarship, which in the case of Namibia, like us who are studying in, in Cuba right now at the moment, are being funded by the Minister of Health and Social Services in Namibia, with, in partnership, of course, with the Cuban government. So what they do is, um, my ministry or my government pays for everything and then what the Cuban government does is they provide the service so yeah now this uh, modality is actually a little bit convenient because number one everything is paid for and number two they are gonna give you a fixed um, allowance or stipend per month 
which sometimes they give it for three months, you know, depending on which government uh, is funding you and stuff. If you are being funded, for example, by the Angolan government, they have a different scheme. If you are being funded by the South African government, it's a different scheme. Uh, if you are, you know, from Botswana, it's a different scheme, etc., etc. So, yeah. But, you know, one of the disadvantages of this scheme is, number one, your government has to make sure that they pay for everything uh, before you start studying in Cuba. And if they have a contract between government and government, it's actually better because everything is already guaranteed. Um, now, you're going to face problems if you are you know, going to study through this uh, scheme. Number one, your medical aid scheme or your health insurance is going to be funded by your government. So your government has to make sure that your scheme is funded or there are funds allocated to that. Otherwise, if you fall into a certain health crisis, you have to pay from your own pocket. That's you have to be mindful of, of that. The other thing also is that the basic um, services that are provided to somebody who is funded through Proyecto Alam or through the Cuban funded scheme is that like things like healthcare, things like um, pool tuition, things like a monthly stipend by the Cuban government, things like opportunities through the Cuban government, you are not going to get those things because for them, they are being treated as if they are Cuban and you are being treated like you are foreign. You are both foreigners, but you know, your schemes are different and you are not going to be treated the same way. So yeah, you should be mindful of that. So, but all in all, this is one of the best um, options for you to actually study because everything is funded for and um, you are going to be able to study, not worrying about, you know, paying for this, paying for that, registration, this, that. Everything is actually done for you. They are going to register for you. They are going to pay for the visa for you. If you encounter a problem, they are actually going to handle it for you because you are being funded by your government and they are obligated to actually provide and render the service without uh, any hiccups whatsoever. Uh, now, another thing, you know, another string attached to being funded by your government is that once you graduate, you have to complete a fixed social service program which sometimes it can include um, internship for countries that provide internships or familiarization programs, you know, or orientation programs, you know, like South Africa, Namibia, uh, sometimes Botswana and Angola. So if they um, provide such orientation programs or familiarization programs, they might count them as part of the social service. But if they don't count it, and if they put a fixed period of, let me say, three years to five years or even seven years, which is basically the period that you studied here in Cuba and the period that they have been funding you, like if they put that, that means that you are going to be working for them for that whole period until you complete the social service. Now, once you complete the social service, that is when now you'll be able to, if you want to go into private, you can go into private. If you want to specialize in your own, you can do that. But if you want to further your studies, with the government, they can actually do it for you without you having to complete um, the social service. That is an option. I have heard of, you know, people who have gone through the programs, you know, talking about it. So yeah, just be mindful of it. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the third way of studying here in Cuba is being a self-financed student. Now, take a point. Being a self-financed student means that you're going to pay every single thing from your application process to acquiring a student visa to acquiring health insurance because there's no way they're going to allow you to come study in cuba without health insurance um things like you know paying for your basic needs buying uniform buying uh, medical equipment or medical um stuff that you're gonna need to you know go through medical school like you know spiegel manometers um things like stethoscopes things like personal um, equipment like thermometers personal equipment like uh autoscopes and stuff like that because there are certain portable things that you can buy and then you can use them on your own but you know when you look at other modalities like you know government finance students cuban 
finance students or scholarships, you know, programs, those people are going to be given these things for free or they are going to be able to be given these things for free. Now, students that are being financed through their government, sometimes they will tell you that, okay, fine, we are not going to buy you A, B, C, and D, but the good thing is that you have your stipend. So it means you can buy those things with your stipend. But once uh, you are a self-financed uh, um, student, it means you have to pay for everything and anything. And the other thing is that, you know, things like accommodation, you have to find your own accommodation if you don't want to live in the hostel, buy your own food, uh, transport, which transport is uh, relatively cheaper, you know, compared to other countries where you have to pay more than a dollar, a US dollar, or more than, um, yeah, more than a dollar. Let me put it that way. Because let me say, for example, if you're Namibian and, you know, you come here, a bus costs less than two Namibian dollars. You know, it's to go anywhere, you know, just think about it. But things that are expensive is like taxis and whatnot, you know, that yes, you know, um, using taxis or using the app, you know, to get a cab, like how people Uber and stuff, that is a little bit more expensive because obviously it's a private kind of business. But yeah, all in all, if you are coming back now to the finance, you know, the self-finance students, all in all is if you have the money, and you can pay for yourself, I feel like you should pay for yourself and you should come study medicine in Cuba because there are a lot of things that people don't put into consideration when they put Cuba as an option. You know, studying medicine in Cuba means you're going to study preventive medicine. You're going to focus more on family medicine and how to treat family um, disorders or diseases or diseases that are... Uh, that you can inherit or that that are heritable you know uh you are gonna focus more on those things now i'm not saying that cuban medical schools don't teach medicine but they teach family medicine that is not what i'm saying what i'm saying is you're gonna have a lot more of experience when it comes to family medicine and preventive medicine as compared to somebody who has studied somewhere else uh, another thing is that um when you're studying in cuba um you're gonna have more hands-on uh, experience when it comes to clinical observations when it comes to clinical practicals like the practicals are actually good because you are basically being treated as if you are a gp in the hospital it's like you're a general so like how i'm saying it would be like as if you're a gp in the hospital so they're gonna treat you like a gp and yeah you are gonna be supervised now by a resident you know when you're an intern and um if uh yeah the other years you're obviously gonna be supervised by interns so interns you are 60 medical uh, students they are the ones that will supervise all the other years and then you will be supervised by a resident and the resident will be supervised by a specialist so like how i've said you know specialists actually run hospitals basically so they are the ones in the hospitals gps are basically non-existent but yeah you can find them in family consulting rooms and stuff you know throughout the communities and stuff but yeah so yeah um that is basically it um uh, i hope i have explained you know everything up into details but if you have questions if you have uh more queries you can hit me up on any of my socials i'll try to link them down below and then you'll be able to contact me down there so yeah um try to search for cuban medical services online or if you contact me i'll obviously try to send you the link and send you um the link directly to the pdf document um, that would provide further information for you to be able to familiarize yourself with all this uh, information so like how I mentioned earlier um, it's okay you know to come study here you know you will be more invested into preventive medicine family medicine and all that without actually uh, disregarding medicine in general because at the end of the day you're in a medical school and they're gonna teach you everything but yeah they are gonna have a special focus on some of these areas and you'll be actually well experienced and well hands-on when it comes to these areas so yeah i don't think i have left anything untouched but 
if there's anything at all that you want to ask me you can try to you know hit me up on my socials that i'm gonna link uh, down below and um if you have any query hit me up there and i'll be able to respond to any of your your queries so yeah having said that um just know that um you are gonna come <laughs> study in spanish and you'll have to study in spanish do everything in spanish uh, do case presentations in Spanish. Everything in Spanish. Spanish is Espanol. Así que, nada. Thank you for watching the video until here. If you have any queries like how I've mentioned, you can hit me up. And yeah, um, if you want me to do another video on anything similar or any other query that you have, you can hit me up on my socials. Comment down below. I'll be able to respond to you in the comment section. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so that whenever I upload a video, you don't miss it. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!